Ready, set, go. Wait, okay, come back, stop. I forgot, what are we talking about today? Well, that was a pretty big hint, as is this. everyone, today I'm drinking 49th Parallels Old School Espresso. Cheers. Our beloved chronograph watches. It's one of our favorite watches, if not favorite watch, within our collection. Because it's both sporty and elegant at the same time. And it's without coincidence that every watch brand also makes a chronograph for us. Not all chronographs are created equally. Unlike dive watches, because for the average swimmer, the average dive depth is 30 feet, for safety reasons. So we can get the same benefits from a $500 diver's watch as we can from a $5,000 diver's watch. But it's different with the chronograph, especially when we start talking about flybacks and retroponds, which we will later on in the show. So what exactly is a chronograph watch? Well, in its simplest terms, it's simply a stopwatch. But it's a super cool looking stopwatch and one that looks great on our wrists. Okay, before we continue with the different types of chronographs, Here's a fun fact. Some of us are familiar with the little murkiness that went on involving who the original inventor of the chronograph was, myself included. A lot of us thought it was Nicholas Riesek who was the inventor of the chronograph until the Louis Monet pocket chronograph in 2013 when history was rewritten. And here's a fun trivial question. Which watch brand do we think is responsible for the first three push chronograph watch? In other words, the first mainstream chronograph. The answer is Breitling. So we can credit Breitling for being the first mainstream luxury brand chronograph. So let's start with three budget friendly chronographs as we work our way up. The first one I notice is the Hatos watches. These are all under $200 and they're out of Buffalo, New York. They actually use quality materials. They use a 316L surgical steel, a sapphire crystal, and a genuine leather band. The 316L steel is the same as 99.9% .9 of the other high-end watch brands. Uh, Rolex is the only one that I know that uses the proprietary 904L steel, but everyone else uses a 316L. It's also 44 millimeters. And some of us may remember the whole Shinola scandal. So to also avoid this, Haidus made it clear on their website, it says assembled in Buffalo, New York with global components. A second budget friendly chronograph is the Detroit Watch Company. You can get one for about $1,000 to $1,800. And this one is the M1 Woodward. It uses the Valjoux 7750, it's 44 millimeters, and it also comes with a calf leather strap with a deployment. This is actually a pretty nice looking watch. And this particular watch this one goes for about $1,500. And the third budget-friendly chronograph is Tissot, the Kurt Turio chronograph at 43 millimeters. It uses the ETA movement. Uh, Tissot's been around for a long time and they're actually the official watch for the NBA, which is no small feat. Partnering with the NBA is a pretty big deal for a brand. But they, Tissot also makes solid 18 gold watches as well. So let's move on to the entry-level luxury chronographs. The first watch, and we're going to talk about five watches in the entry level luxury watches and then the full on luxury watches. So the first watch is the Omega Speedmaster Moon Watch. This goes for about $5,200 to $6,200 depending on the Hesalite crystal or a see through back versus the solid back. It's also 42 millimeters and this happens to be one of the most popular chronographs there are. The second chronograph is Zinn. It's spelled S-I-N-N, but I think it's pronounced Zinn. It's a German watch brand. The Zinn 103 here, this is a new release from Basel World 2017. And the Zinn watches range from about 1100 to 4500, and this watch is 41 millimeters. This model is a limited edition to 300 pieces, and this one is $2,200. I think Zins make really nice watches. They do a lot of um, treatments to their cases. They're known to make their case, hardening their cases and hardening their crystals, their sapphire crystals. 
they still don't use an in-house movement. They use an ETA based movement, but they do a lot of modifications to the cases and the crystals, actually making it a really tough watch. And Zen watches are actually have a pretty solid reputation. And the third watch is a Chopard Milli Miglia. Miglia. This is 42 millimeters and it goes for about $5,000. It's got the standard chronograph second hands, 30 minute counter and 12 hour counters. And I like the rubber tire design strap. I came close to actually picking up this watch a few years ago when it was about $3,500 in the boutiques. But I went with the Panerai 40 millimeter uh, Luminor with the power reserve instead. I know that's not even a chronograph, but that was a watch I chose over this one, over the show part. And the fourth watch is another German watch brand called Junghans, specifically the Max Bill. This one's about $1,500. And the Max Bill is named after the famed architect, painter, sculptor, and product designer. It's a simple and clean design. It has a stop function and date, and it's 40 millimeters. This chronograph, among the other chronographs here, is a really simple looking watch, but it's there's something about it that makes it really, really classic, kind of cool. And the fifth Entry-level luxury chronograph is a Hamilton Broadway. This is about $1,900 and it has a 60-hour power reserve. This is supposed to be reminiscent of the New York City skyline. I also like the burgundy dial. And Hamilton has a really long history. And the final category of chronographs is a full-on luxury ones. This is my favorite category. And the first watch, of course, is a Rolex Daytona at 40 millimeters. It has a very storied history, especially with its movement. So it went to three stages, starting in 1963 to 1988, where it was a manual wind. And then from 88 to 2000, it used a modified Zenith movement. And then from uh, 2000 to the present is when they use their own in-house movement. And they're back to using the six digit reference ID number. Second luxury chronograph is the Vacheron Constantine Overseas. This is 42 and a half millimeters and everything about this watch is a standout. It has a really unique bracelet, the Fleur de Lis type bracelet. It just stands out among the bracelets and overall with the watch itself. Um, I also like that this uses a column wheel chronograph versus a cam actuated chronograph, which is more precise. The actuated chronograph is for budget conscious watch lovers because the levers and arms are much simpler to produce as it allows more play versus the precise column wheel. The third chronograph is a type of chronograph we talked about at the top of the show, which is the flyback. This is the Brigade Type 20, and it's the only flyback to make this list. This is 42 millimeters. Now, to me, Brigade has the look and feel of old world money. So what is a flyback function? The flyback simply means you can reset the timer without having to stop and then start it again. It's a lot quicker. The fourth watch is the Zenith El Primero Retro Pond. This, the Retro Pond was the other type of chronograph we mentioned at the top of the show. Now, what is a Retro Pond? The Retro Pond means it has multiple seconds hands. So, which means you can time different events simultaneously. And when a second is not active, they act as, they move in one direction. So you'll have the second second hands on, on underneath the other one. It's about $11,000. This Zenith is also 44 millimeters. I like Zenith watches a lot. And the fifth chronograph happens to be my favorite new watch. And that's the Bell & Ross BRX1 RS17. It's made in partnership with the Renault racing team. And here's another fun fact. My very first car when I was 16 years old was the Renault Fuego. And it had the plastic louvers on the back because it was a hatchback. And you know, when you're 16, it makes the car look extra cool. I, was, I wasn't even aware that Renault was still around, but it's good to know that it is. This Bell & Ross is big. It's expensive at 45 millimeters and $24,000. It's just a gorgeous watch. The materials they use, and it's an in-house movement by the way, and the materials they use are carbon fiber and titanium. Even on the bracelet, the bracelet is made with carbon fiber and rubber. Now $24,000 is a lot for a Bell & Ross because it doesn't carry the same cachet as other watches. And I'm not a big fan of Bell & Ross, but I am of this Bell & Ross model. You can get a Bell & Ross like this for under $1,000. So $24,000 is a lot for a Bell & Ross, but not so much compared to other watches who don't, who don't use these exotic materials. So there's that. So even though I said this Bell & Ross is my favorite new watch, would this be the watch that I would spend my money on from this list? The answer is no. My, my, because I think this is 
a novelty. It's new and exciting. So I would spend my money on a Vacheron Constantine overseas. But would I buy that Vacheron Constantine over this Daytona? No, of course not. This is platinum and this ice blue dial is super sexy. But what about metal for metal? Would I take the steel Daytona versus this steel Vacheron Constantine? No, I would take the steel Vacheron Constantine. I hope you followed that. That was a really long answer. But in short, it's the, in steel, the Vacheron Constantine is a chronograph that I would get from this list. Let me know what you think about these chronographs. And thanks for watching. I'll see you the next time. Thank you.